It has been a while. Welcome back. We're going to do some quick tips on balancing equations. So I've got a chemical equation here. If you want to copy it down, you can. Um, but this is ways to think through. So I'm just going to work through and I'll kind of narrate as I go. Remember, balanced chemical equations have uh, elements that match on the reactant side. So reactants are over here and products are over here. We want elements that are the same on the reactants and the products. They have to match each other because conservation of matter says that nothing is created or destroyed. So I'm going to just start by quick, we'll split this down the middle. We've got hydrogen and oxygen. And if we do our counts, I've got two hydrogen and two oxygen. So I'm going to put twos here. And on the product side, I still have hydrogen and I still have oxygen. And our counts, though, are a little different. I've got two hydrogen in my water. And I've got two oxygen here in the oxygen molecule and an oxygen over here attached to the water. So we've got three oxygen on the products. So you can see hydrogen is balanced, that's good. Oxygen is not. Uh, what I like to do is if I have a singleton like this, I've got an oxygen on its own, I'm just gonna go ahead and double this compound. And that gets me up to an even number of atoms. Now, it's a little bit different if you would have like an O3, like an ozone here, but right now I've got three oxygens, so I'm gonna double this and that will give me a nice even number of oxygens I can work with. But that also that coefficient applies to the hydrogen as well. So I've got two times two hydrogens gives me four hydrogens. So I've made a change here. Oxygens are now an even number, so it's a little easier to work with. Let's jump back over to the reactant side. I've got two hydrogens and two oxygens. And because this is a compound, I can drop a two in front there and that updates all of my atoms. Now I've got four hydrogens, four oxygens in my reactants, four oxygens and four hydrogens in my products, and this is a balanced equation. So if you've got water in your reactions, this is a helpful one to check. Would doubling help you out? Uh, in this case it does, because I had an odd number of oxygens. This gives me a nice even number that I can use in my reactant side. Let's do one's a little bit tougher. So this is another reaction, and this time we've got some iron with water reacting to form iron oxide. This is an iron two oxide, and some hydrogen gas is coming off. So remember reactants are on the left, and products are on the right. So as I'm thinking through, I'm gonna keep track of my atoms. I've got an iron, I've got hydrogen, and I've got oxygen. On the left in my reactants, I've got one iron atom, two hydrogens and one oxygen. On the right side, still have iron, hydrogen, and oxygen. This time I've got three irons. I've got two hydrogens and four oxygens. So we're gonna go one atom at a time. Hydrogen is already balanced, so I'm gonna try not to change it if I can help it, but sometimes you can't help it. So I'm gonna give myself three irons over here. That's an easy one to take care of. So now iron's good, uh, two hydrogens, and I've got a four to one ratio I only have oxygen in one spot, so I have to quadruple my water. I, it's the only way to get up to four oxygens over here in the reactant side. So I've got three irons, four oxygens, but I now have eight hydrogens. So let's update this guy and come back over to the products. Iron's good, oxygen's good, but I can change my hydrogen on its own, put a four coefficient in the front, and now this is a balanced equation. So use that back and forth, one atom at a time, take it as you go slowly. If you get caught up and you get tangled up, start over. There's nothing wrong with starting over. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.